G'day guys, so I'm introducing the Hydra SDR RF1. This is an advanced software defined radio receiver and you can see here that I've received one from the guys at Hydra SDR, so thank you very much for sending that through. It's in a nice aluminium enclosure. It's got two SMA ports, one here on one side for antenna, the other side is for a clock in, an external clock, and you've got also a USB-C connection on this device. That's all there is really to it. You also get a custom USB-C cable, so you've got USB-C on one side, USB-A on the other, and these two toroids here are in the middle. This unit is built in and made in the USA. So you get it in this nice little box and it covers quite a wide receiver frequency range. The frequency range is 24 megahertz to 1800 megahertz and you can also view 10 megahertz instantaneous bandwidth. So you can see a slice of spectrum, 10 megahertz wide. This uh, unit is available for uh, purchase from DigiKey and it works with a whole variety of different uh, softwares. I've been using it with SDR++ as has been recommended here on the website. I have tested also with SDR console. I've done a video on SDR console, um, which is sort of my preferred SDR software. Um, it does work with that, but it did some weird things. Uh, the unit itself here is similar to an AirSpy R2. So in the SDR console software, it doesn't directly support the Hydra SDR because it's really brand new. So what I did was I selected the AirSpy R2 and it worked, but I had some quirks when I was adjusting the gains and it kept uh, just completely muting the signal and other things. So I ended up going to SDR++ and there is a special version of SDR++ here that uh, directly supports the Hydra SDR on um, the Hydra SDR GitHub. So you can go in here and you can download this. I think there's some various different uh, versions, one for Windows here, you've also got for uh, Linux and also for Mac OS as well. Now it was all very simple to get this going. All I did was I took the unit, I plugged it into the USB-C connection here on the side, I plugged this into my PC. I didn't have to install any drivers on my PC. Maybe I already had them installed, but check out the quick start guide for more information. That's all I did. Plugged in an antenna and I was away and receiving. Now there is also on the quick start guide here a very helpful PDF which you can go through here and read about how to run the software. I found it very intuitive to run um, SDR++. There was a lot of settings um, here on the left hand side that you can play around with for your own individual situation to see what you can receive. I was receiving quite a few different things. I was receiving FM radio like here in the uh, screenshots. 40 collectible discs featuring all your Disneyland resort favorites. I could also tune up and down the band. I was receiving uh, amateur radio signals from my repeater. I've only driven automatic vehicles when attempting to talk on a radio. I've never tried with a manual. So um, I only use one foot and one hand, Jerry. That leaves the other hand to work the radio. Uh, so they came through quite well. I was also receiving a couple of um, other signals as well. So on the band, I could see the carriers of the television transmitters as well that are in my area. They were quite wide, about seven or so megahertz wide, and they had a little guard band in there as well, which was very interesting to see. Between the two, I could see digital radio. Couldn't listen to it because I couldn't decode those things using the software. I went up to the UHF portion, and I also found some other interesting bits and pieces in there too. So there's been a lot of discussion about the 70 centimetre band and here in Australia we have uh, what they call a LIPD, Low Interference Potential Device Lipid Band and that runs all the way from 433.050 uh, to 434.790. So what we tr do is we try and keep our repeater inputs if we can um, out of this band um, or add CTCSS tones, which doesn't always help, but we try to avoid our repeater inputs in this band. And to just sort of demonstrate what that actually looks like here, so I've got my um, Hydra SDR connected here with SDR++. And you see here from 433 uh, all the way up to that 434. Point, uh, was it 4.79, you can see all of the uh, interfering devices, all of the... Um, carriers and blips and all sorts of stuff and I think you can also kind of hear it as well potentially C 
so that's that's just uh that's just hammering away there I even found a studio to transmit a link from a local FM community radio station that I could hear up at 847 megahertz. Says it's not just older Australians who are affected. Stroke can happen to anyone at any time. It's not just something that happens to older Australians. So here's some more tech specs here on the device itself. So it has a clock input. So this is a 10 megahertz input. So you can use this to frequency discipline your uh, unit so that you have it uh, on frequency for if you're receiving high higher frequencies above a gigahertz or something like that you want to make sure that you're on frequency uh, it's got the USB-C you've got your LED lights here as well you've got uh, some other various other bits and pieces if we go and have a look at what the actual chip is here it is using a MCU LPC 4370 triple core MCU fully open source software so that's uh, very going to be very handy for those that want to uh, play with the open source um, stuff and in their words Hydra SDR RF1 is an advanced software defined SDR receiver it's capable of sampling 10 megahertz of spectrum anywhere between 24 megahertz to 1800 megahertz and even beyond with extensions it is the most affordable compact and extensive wideband receiver on the market so I found it incredibly easy to get started um, even with the SDR++ software that I hadn't really used before. Um, here you can see it detected it automatically. I could select my bandwidth and all you got to do is press play up here to start uh, using your SDR. You can also reduce the bandwidth um, and you can uh, change the LNA gains here as well. You can choose from sensitive, linear or free. So you've got all of these options here. Hit plus, there you go, I'm receiving now uh, the FM broadcast band. A little bit further down here, you could see uh, we're on wide FM here at the moment, but I've also got decode RDS, so we're actually receiving uh, this particular uh, radio station and we can see the RDS signals that are being sent out. You saw that the song that was playing recently and also the other um, adverts here that are appearing. And you can just about change all sorts of different things in here. So you could use this to feed into some other pieces of software. You could feed it into a virtual audio cable if you want to use it for uh, receiving data or receiving uh, an off-air signal from something else and you want to be able to analyze that or you just want to be able to tune around and just listen. It also supports other modes as well. So you've got narrow FM, you've got AM, you've got USB, LSB, wide FM, DSB, CW and RAW. So uh, we can literally just tune around the bands here and have a bit of a look. Um, SDR++ also has here um, detailed some of the uh, different band plans. So here we are in the middle of the airband voice and this receives airband uh, very well. At the moment, as you can see, I've been uh, playing around with this mainly for the FM broadcast. So you can see that I've got all of these spurs here. So you do have to adjust your LNA up and down a little bit. There we go. I was really uh, cranking too much uh, gain there. And now that's dropped off. So that's a little bit more uh, reasonable. Here we go. We can see a signal there on 156.6. That is probably no doubt a marine transmission. And if I had it on the right uh, narrow FM, we would have been able to listen to that. But you can see there that it has a history so we can easily move backwards and forwards and I can go select that frequency. I'm assuming that it's 156.6. We can also go in and if I move myself, zoom in a little bit there, we can also zoom out. So I've got the full 10 megahertz of spectrum there that I'm looking at or I can zoom in and really zoom right in on that um, particular frequency or that particular signal. Now SDRs are not just used for receiving terrestrial signals here on Earth, but you can also receive signals from the International Space Station. And I did just that. If you want to see more, then there is a video showing you that over here, along with a playlist of other videos all to do with SDRs.